Where's your sword? This is my sword. No, man, I need this sword. I don't want to use that anymore. Where are you going to go like that and everything's going to explode? Are you sure? Yeah. Unless you want to hit it with a light bar. Alright, fine. I feel stupid with this sword. <laughs> you feel stupid last <laughs> shoot. Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Phil with Precision LED and today is episode six of our ultimate Tacoma LED build we are working on here at our warehouse. Now, if you've missed it and you are just tuning in, you should rewind back to the beginning of the series and check out all the work we've already done on the batteries, the roof rack, the LEDs that we've already installed. And today we're going to work on new light bars, tail lights, and some mounting brackets on our Prinsu roof rack to tie everything together. All right, let's unbox these bad boys and see what we got. What I have here are two 40 inch or 42 inch light bars that we're testing for the front of the roof rack. Now the reason I got two is because Oracle has two different series in terms of quality and brightness. These are single row LEDs, but this is a much more substantial light bar than their dual row series here. So this one is supposedly much, much higher quality, much more brightness. This one is a little bit on the lower end, uh, but dual row, right? So less power for LEDs, but twice as many. And this one is single row. So less LEDs, but much more powerful and larger. Looks like we've got some open-ended wiring, so we're gonna have to do some soldering work to get things ready. I do have 14 gauge wire that we'll use to run the cabling down to the engine bay, so we will try those out. We're gonna try both, see which one we like better, right up there. We've also got some of these LED tail lights that we got, and I forgot the supplier, so we'll put them in a description link. But these are LED tails, so all of your lighting, except for the back of reverse light, have been converted to LED. And that means that's a place where we can put our precision LED, back of reverse LED into the socket here and make this whole thing an LED converted light. So we'll try this one out, see how we like it as well. Let's get started. Okay, 10 millimeter. Check this out. I wonder what those lights do. Maybe that's the turn. Okay, but what do those do? Oh, maybe break? Yep. Work? Mm hmm. Ooh, yeah, that's bright. Looks good? Mm hmm. All right, well, now that we've tested everything to make sure it works, let's get this assembled, do the other side, and then um, move on. Very nice. got here. Okay. Normally I'm not a huge fan of aftermarket LED tail lights, but man, these reverse bulbs look really bright in here. And this is not too over the top, I don't think. You know. Let us know what you think in the comments. Should we keep them? Should we get rid of them? Should we upgrade to maybe something else that you guys recommend? We'd love to hear your feedback on it. We are moving on to the light bar here, and these are the brackets from Prinsu. What orientation? Something like this. Right? That's gonna go against the roof rack, and these are gonna go like that. All right? It shouldn't require too much effort to get these ones at least mounted, and then we'll worry about wiring. I've got some 
Ooh, nuts and bolts I gotta worry about. Okay, seven sixteenths. Okay, let's go up. Thanks for the help. <laughs> All right. Or is it something like this? Nope, that's dumb. So it wouldn't be like that. You sure those are facing the right way? I think so. I like the bolts gonna keep the light bar. Do they stick out too much? Uh, and we're just gonna have to flip them around later. What the? Sh How much is being impeded here? A lot. It looks like a lot. It looks like a lot. There is a partial solution. There are two mounting holes. Maybe the second mounting hole is better. Oh, but the screws are in the way. You see how it can't move? Although that is like the perfect height. Right now I have the brackets in like this. I can flip the brackets around like that and that will allow this thing to rotate better. So. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that was my suggestion at the beginning. Was it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. I told you before that the brackets are on wrong. You're not smart enough for that. I'm glad I thought of a solution. Look at that, spacers. That's a little too much. These are too short. So maybe we cut these in half? What do we cut them with? Okay. We can make this work. Okay, that'll do. I'm pretty much a genius. Ah! I think I broke it. All right, what I have here is a 12 volt DC power supply. Well, it's actually more than that. Let's get the voltage up to 12. Oh, this is more than my system can output. So this is gonna be ridiculously bright. I'm not even at nine volts. I'm already at almost five amps, which is the max of this system. So volts times amps, that's five, that's 400 watts, 40, whatever, four, P equals IR, whatever, some kind of math. This is exceeding the max power output of this power supply for the light. So I think this means that this is gonna go ridiculously far. What we're looking at here are all of our wiring supplies for the light bar. Normally we wouldn't redo this whole connector, this quick disconnect, since it's already a waterproof connection, but the housing is cracked here. So I figure this is a good example for us to show you how this whole assembly comes together because this is our double row, our cheaper version of the light bar. The one we're probably gonna use, the single row black series, doesn't have a wiring connector. So we have to assemble it ourselves. So we're gonna cut this apart, show you how to do this entire process on this one, and then do it again to that one up top. We've got 14 gauge wire, got a crimp connector, some quick disconnect male and female plug ends. All you need is one, two, three, these three items and a soldering iron, maybe some heat shrink uh, tubing, and you'll be good to go. It, this stuff here right here was like maybe $45 worth of parts. So not too bad. Let's do this. Cool.
we've got our first male and female connector put together here. And just so you see how it works, there are watertight seals throughout. So this is good for outdoor application. So once you get the male and female in, it clicks in shut and you know this connection is good. Now, this end I've left intentionally long because I don't know how much cable I'll need to get down from the roof rack, down the side of the, the B pillar uh, along the windshield and into the engine bay. So this section is left intentionally uncut. We'll cut it um, and then strip back the wiring and connect it to the Switch Pro system uh, a little bit later. We are going to replicate this same cable setup. I'll bring the LED bar down here so I can work on it on this table. Let's do that. Man, this is so much heavier. I should probably mention, all this extra connector work that we're doing is not totally necessary for your own installation. You could just as easily use butt connectors and just hardwire all the wires together. We just want to use the quick disconnect so that we can test between the single row, the dual row, and other LEDs that we get in stock uh, that we test on the vehicle. So that's why we're using quick disconnects. You don't have to go to this length just to do it our way, but you could if you were cool. Hello. Nope. Okay, I use that and uh, just wedge it in there and I hit the end with the hammer. Okay, maybe. <gasps> oh God. This is a dumb idea. It's pretty in there. It is, yeah. I have a little Allen key. Uh, that I think will be just small enough. Yeah. See how it's going in? Okay, well, if anyone has a better method uh, of how to do this, uh, let me know. I'm gonna stop there just because I highly doubt it's gonna go anywhere. So let's go ahead and reinstall that light bar. Now for this section, I am gonna hardwire to the Switch Pro system. So we'll probably get about this much wire. If you remember on the Switch Pros, anyone that has two of the same color means it's a 30 amp circuit. So let's do that. Let's test for now. Okay. Come on, baby. Look at the little loop. Let's take it outside. Oh. So we're gonna test how different the lower end model is from the higher end model. So the difference about 200 something and 600 something dollars in terms of price and quality, or maybe just price. We'll find out. Can you hit the button? 
it's uh, cooler white. Also, definitely just a spot. So, super focused, long distance. Okay. Turn the other one on. That one's much brighter. Seven hundred sixty-seven. That's the Lux rating for the first light bar. Seven sixty-seven. Yeah. Aren't our headlights like three thousand? Yeah, at ten feet. This is at like a hundred feet. So ten times. Second light bar. What do you guess? I'm going go with 400. 525. This is a bad place to stand. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Let's recap what we just did. We took the single row LED light bar, 40 inch, I think it's 240 watt system, did a light test and gathered about 760 lux at this particular distance. It doesn't really matter what the distance is because we're doing a relative measurement. We then hooked up the same wiring to our double row LED light bar, uh, again from Oracle, uh, but a lower class series, and only got 300 lux at the same distance, uh, same measurement. So the smaller single row, more than what, threefold outperformed the, the double row setup. It's pretty quite impressive, if you ask me. I think I would have preferred having both a spot and flood combo light bar system. Both of these light bars are spot only, which means they are specifically intended just to point as far down the road as humanly possible. Uh, whereas a combo spot flood would give me some local lighting as well. But I guess that's what the dish lights are for, right? So who cares? That concludes the test for the night. And that really concludes the video for tonight. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. And uh, like and subscribe, because we got more for you in the next one.